Hey, hey, guys. Happy Monday, Myth Busting Monday. If you, I'll give it a couple of oh, the stars again. They keep surprising me. Um, <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> if you missed last Monday, we talked about the complexity of the bone matrix. And I was talking about how calcium alone um, is not only a, a misguided recommendation, but potentially a dangerous one. And there was a post I made that went into a little bit more detail about that um, on my blog. And if you are interested in that part one, um, let me know in the comments if you want to. I talked about all the nutrients that are needed for the bone matrix and um, went into that a little bit and how they help each other. So it's, um, you know, protein, magnesium, calcium, and some other nutrients. And I wanted to talk about uh, magnesium specifically today um, as an example of how complicated it can be to supplement appropriately. Just understanding that any supplement you grab off the counter or at the, you know, off the counter at the store is not likely going to be the best choice. Um, I have an entire podcast that goes over supplement quality, supplement safety from a general standpoint. So comment below if you would like that and let me know. I can get you the link. I have it Spotify, Amazon Music, and YouTube, I believe. So let me know. Um, but I wanted to specifically use magnesium. First of all, dive deeper because magnesium is a very important mineral, but also talk about it. It's a great example of understanding that you need to be educated and empowered when you choose a supplement and you need to work with someone who's also learning all of this. Um, so we're going to go into this now. Um, so just magnesium, it's another one of those great bone matrix minerals. And so kind of following up on that myth busting Monday from last week where I talked about how calcium is just one tiny part of the whole picture. Magnesium for bones is just one of many things that magnesium is needed for. In addition to being critical for bone health, magnesium also has a role in all electrical activity of your heart and your brain. It helps with smooth muscle and skeletal muscle contraction. It's part of over 300 different enzymes, part of creating energy. It helps with carb and fat metabolism. It can help with depression, helps your body's natural detox abilities, balances potassium level, can help with constipation, migraines, fibromyalgia, GERD, osteoporosis, bone health, muscle cramps and restless leg, menstrual cramps, and more. And so it's this very, very important mineral that over 50% of Americans are deficient in. Um, and then when it comes to the bone matrix regarding calcium, this is where that calcium-magnesium blend is very important because if you remember that free-floating calcium can cause calcification in the arteries and become a risk factor for cardiovascular disease if we don't have the magnesium to kind of take that calcium and get it into the bones where we need it. So we also see more kidney stones for the same reason. We don't want free-floating calcium. Um, so that is a problem, and that's, an, that's where magnesium is needed when it comes to bone health. Because, yes, you do need calcium in your bones, but you need that magnesium to get it into the bones. Now, again, over 50% of people are low in magnesium. And if you are stressed or inflamed, that burns through extra magnesium. If you have chronic health issues or chronic GI issues, that burns through magnesium. So that increases your risk of being deficient. And like protein, um, if there's any digestive issues, if you get bloating, if you get cramps, if you get gassy, if you've got GI problems, protein and magnesium are both difficult to digest. So you may struggle to absorb enough magnesium. So that's where gut health becomes important as well. And then if you are a high uh, sweat rate person, whether that's because you just naturally sweat more or because you train um, a lot and you're doing a lot of exertion and ex exercise or you live in a hot climate, uh, magnesium is an electrolyte that's easily lost. So that can be another thing. And I saw a lot of people when I worked at the gym where we saw that they had more stiff muscles, more cramping, more muscle spasms, and we used magnesium to address that, and that helped with a lot of athletes. So first, let's hit a couple of the top food sources, then we'll go into the supplements. Um, magnesium is generally a safe supplement for nearly everyone, and I do encourage a separate magnesium supplement in addition to a good multivitamin, especially during high stress or high training times. Uh, but first, food. I'm going to list a couple things here. 
So just kind of running down, I'm not going to go through the amounts. Uh, this will be in the second blog post that I make next week. So if you want that actual like written out list, make sure um, you're on my newsletter. Comment below if you're not and we can get your email added to that. Um, so pumpkin seeds, quinoa, Swiss chard, spinach, sesame seeds, black beans, cashews and sunflowers, brown rice, pinto beans and lima beans, and almonds are probably some of the highest foods in magnesium. So there's that list. You can re-listen to this in a minute. Now, when it comes to supplements, this is where form is critical, the type of supplement, you know, what... Uh, and I don't mean like tablet or capsule or gel or anything like that, though that can play a role too. But magnesium can come in many different forms and they all have different absorption abilities, safety factors, and secondary uses. And that's what's really cool about magnesium. So some examples of this, there's magnesium oxide. This is very common because it's very cheap. And if you remember in last Monday's talk, I was saying a lot of supplement companies cut corners to make a cheaper product. Well, you get what you pay for. So if you get this magnesium oxide, it's usually cheap, it's usually poorly absorbed, and it can cause an upset stomach in some people. So I, I recommend avoiding that. Now we get into some other things. We've got calcium, or I'm sorry, magnesium hydroxide. That one can help with constipation. Magnesium glyconate can help. It's part of our natural detox. So especially people who are prone to genetically being less uh, able to detox, that can be a good option. Magnesium citrate is more acidic, citrate like a citric acid, but that can help balance pH levels in your body if that's appropriate. Magnesium taurate can actually be calming. This is a good one before bed or for people with a lot of anxiety. Magnesium aspartate or magnesium glutamate. These are more excitatory, so they're good for people who are dealing with chronic fatigue, but you want to be careful with anyone who's got ADD, autism, or anxiety because, again, they kind of already give that a uh, little bit of excitatory energy. Magnesium chloride, that's a good one for topical applications. So this is what I use in a lotion um, on legs after a long run. Anyone who's got restless leg, muscle spasms, fibromyalgia. Again, if your stomach doesn't absorb real well, if you're having GI issues and you need to bypass the gut, go right into the muscles, you're gonna do a lotion uh, so that's magnesium chloride usually, or magnesium sulfate, which is usually found in things like Epsom salt. So again, that's also good for muscle cramps, muscle uh, high training loads, fibromyalgia, because again, it bypasses the gut, goes right to the muscles. However, do watch out for the magnesium sulfate. For some people, that can cause looser stool. So that gives you an idea why, like it really matters. What's your story? What are your needs? How's your digestion? How's your stress? What levels do you need? And what form do you need? So that is all part of the decision when you create a supplement plan. Now, magnesium is a larger mineral than others. Like literally, it's just larger than other things. So it's really hard to actually fit adequate amounts in a multivitamin. So this is also probably part of why so many people are deficient. If we're not eating well, we're stressed, we don't have the best digestion, and it's not at a good level in our multivitamin. So that's why I usually recommend people take an additional one. So... Um, yeah, I, so I use uh, the Thorn Elite multivitamin. It's got magnesium chelate, which is very absorbable. And then I also do the magnesium chloride lotion on my muscles sometimes after, especially after like multi-hour events or races and things like that. And then sometimes I'll also do a magnesium glyconate on the side. So that'll wrap this up. That's our short-ish little talk. And um, if you want a list of those foods and supplements that I kind of walked through, you can one, re-listen to the video, or two, it'll be in writing in next week's blog post, next week's article. So comment below if you want to get added to that list or you missed part one. Um, so that was the article, Taking Only Calcium for Bones is Taking a Risk. And it'll include those lists and it'll be published next week. Uh, if you are interested in getting a 15% discount on any supplements, including a magnesium or magnesium lotion, comment discount below in the comments and we'll get you connected and I'll help you create a supplement game plan based on your needs. So I hope you, oh, <laughs> hey Matthew, hey Gutsy. Uh, oh, and we got Claudia too. Hi, look at that. Oh, a lot of people jumping on. Hi, Aaron. Hey, Carol. Thanks guys. Nice to have some live watchers for once. 
So I hope you guys have an awesome Monday. I hope that explains some things about magnesium, gives you some ideas of what to look for. Um, I'll post a picture in the comments of signs and symptoms of magnesium deficiency as well. Again, it's pretty common. Um, and let me know what other questions you have, what other things you've heard, and what else you would like to learn about for next week's Myth Busting Monday. You guys take care. Have a good one.